My name is uh, Dr. James Machok Ntoimunya, the principal investigator for Ayanda program, University of Nairobi. I'm also a professor in obstetrics and gynecology in the same university. My presentation is going to be on overview of grants management cycle. And to do that, I'll go through the following key components of grants management cycle. Institutional research and grants culture, identification of grants applications, evaluation of uh, grant feasibility, grant application process, uh, grant decision making and award or decline, grant compliance, performance measurements and reporting, close out, and we conclude with sustainability uh, aspects. The slide on the screen is a graphic representation of the key components of the grants management cycle. Now, before I touch on those key components, I would like to emphasize that the grants management cycle is an overview of basically the various aspects of research and grants management, and it's better implemented in situations where the institution has a centralized office of managing research and grants. And the key person involved in most of these components, implementation of most of the components, is a research and, a research and administrator uh, with support of the top uh, institutional leadership and other people involved in research and grants uh, management. The first component of the grant management cycle, as I alluded to earlier, is the institutional research grant culture. The institution is very key in ensuring that the institution benefits from the grants they apply for or the research they carry, carry out. The top leadership, therefore, becomes very key, and therefore they need to be sensitized and they need to be fully aware of the activities which the grant is supposed to address or to support. In that regard, therefore, the institution uh, would better be placed if it has a centralized research and grants office to support all the activities of the research or the grant which has been applied for and awarded. In that regard also, it will be important that there is a coordinated grants writing, submission, and award management, which again is part of the centralized office I've just mentioned too, where the research administrator becomes very key, supported by other people in that office uh, and working very closely with the various uh, institutional leaders the principal investigators, the students, and even with the other uh, people who are involved in that particular grant, including the donors, of course, who will be uh, waiting to see that their money, uh, their funds are properly being used, uh, and also the other collaborators, if it was a collaborative grant application. Uh, following, therefore, the policies of the donors and the institution is very important, and the institutions, therefore, should be, first and foremost, be conversant with the donor agency policies and guidelines, but also uh, the, the institution possibly has got the policies and guidelines which have been developed as part of the financial management of the institution, um, the other aspect of the institutional culture is the human capacity uh, building. Um, it's expected that um, the PIs, a large PI base within an institution is very important uh, in the grants, uh, in following all the aspects of the grant implementation. Um, the other aspect is the databases for donor agencies, which will be very useful uh, in supporting the principal investigators 
and other upcoming researchers who would want to apply for grants. Therefore, having systems or the facilities for ease of reference uh, becomes very important. Um, the linkages and the partnerships listed within an easily accessible place like a website or uh, within um, uh, the library is also very important. The second component of the grants management cycle is the identification of the grant opportunities. Most institutions are not able to apply for grants because the faculty, the students, and the other people who would apply for grants in those institutions do not, do not have systems for knowing where the opportunities are or who are the donors for the areas they would want to carry out research. The systems, therefore, for efficient and effective identification of the various opportunities for grants application becomes a very important second component of the grants management cycle. The Office of the Research Support, usually centralized office uh, in an institution, uh, as a system either in the web-based or in the, in, in the library where the faculty or the students uh, will be able to see uh, the various opportunities where they can apply for grants. The third component is the evaluation of the grant feasibility. When the grant opportunity is circulated to the faculty and the students, it won't be necessary that there is an aspect of looking at who can apply for it, whether it is relevant for the institution or whether it's also relevant for the nation in which that research or that grant will be, uh, will be implemented. It is therefore the role of the research, uh, research administrator within the centralized research and grants office to look through the grant and see whether who can apply for it and what re relevant qualifications is required for the principal investigator, for instance, and other key personnel in the, in the, in the write-up of the grants proposal. It's important, therefore, as they're looking at the feasibility, look at what the donor wants, the scope, and the uh, areas to be addressed to, match it with the uh, institutional mandate and the core mandate, and also look at the national research priorities, for instance and obviously, finally, identify the team to sit down and write the grant. By the time the team starts writing the grant, it won't be necessary that they make sure that they are following the donor agency rules and guidelines, uh, and the institution also gives them time to uh, apply, to sit and write, maybe a week or two, uh, and at the same time as they are doing that, they may identify other collaborators within the country or without, internationally or locally. So, and if there is need for those other institutions they have, uh, sub, uh, want to work with to provide support letters, they will need to contact them. The, the grant writing process, it, it's, it's a very important component, therefore, in the whole cycle. And it has got very many components to make it ef effective and efficient. Now, the application process is the next one. And the application process assumes or uh, presupposes that the grant has already been written according to the donor agency and guidelines or according to the call for grant application guidelines. And therefore, the application, some of them will require that it's electronically submitted. And it uh, means, therefore, the institution will have the right facilities and the environment for electronic submission. Um, but also, they will have the, po the required um, uh, programs to do that, because some of them will require 
specialized programs to ensure that the submission goes on effectively. Now, once the grant has been applied and reviewed by the donor, there are only two decisions usually. Either you have been awarded the grant or you have not. Important here is to note that um, once you are awarded, of course, it is excitement. It's a, it's a plus for yourself as the principal investigator and the peer and, uh, and the institution. Sometimes we can use this winning and grant to encourage uh, others to also apply. The other aspect of um, review and grant decision is uh, a grant when it's not awarded. It's not good to fail, but from a grant's perspective, it's always good to know that it's not easy and possible, humanly speaking, to win every grant you apply. More often than not, you never see anything close to 40% success rate in all grant applications. Most of them will be between 20 and 40%. And the ones who have not succeeded, not because they are not great scientists, it's more often than not, it's maybe the available funds or the donor conditionalities, obviously maybe very stiff, uh, and they may not be able to fund everybody who applies. So there are many factors which make one not succeed, not necessarily meaning that um, you have failed. However, the biggest lesson to learn here is that there are always uh, reviewers' comments which are sent back to you as the principal investigator. And from those comments, I found them personally very useful in terms of uh, improving my skills and knowledge in grants application. It's good to read them carefully and look at where possibly you may have uh, required some more input uh, in your grant application. Now, once you've been awarded grant, therefore, the other component and the key component of the grants management cycle is the grant compliance. Now, you have the money, you have the notice of a warrant, and the funds are already in your institution. Uh, sometimes, uh, we have to be careful not to be carried away by the excitement of winning a million dollars or five hundred thousand dollars or whatever amount and forget that there is a price to pay. It's important that the implementation is done well. It's important that you deliver what you promised to deliver and therefore first step is to really get familiarized very firm and serious familiarization with the donor and the institution conditionalities of the implementation of that grant. In that regard, therefore, it's going to look at your implementation strategy, which was part of your application, the key activities, the timelines, uh, what you send you do first, what you send you do um, at the end of the first six months or three months, and so on and so forth. So that familiarization by all the key players, with all the key players, including the institutional leadership, becomes very important. Because when you begin in an environment, in a situation where everyone knows what he or she is supposed to do, the roles, very specific roles, then implementation of that grant becomes very easy. And certainly, success assured. There are certain aspects which also forms part of the uh, grants management cycle, the performance measuring and the reporting. And this becomes also important as part of the whole process of the entire cycle. You could even employ a person to do that aspect of monitoring and evaluation. It will be important therefore to crack and document, to track and uh, document uh, or and report all the, all the project activities. And therefore, if we follow all those various components of the cycle, it means, therefore, we'll have implemented the grant well, we'll have achieved our objectives, our aims, all the intended outputs will have been achieved, and the various impacts been measured within that implementation period. And most of the grants, always have an end.
either three years, five years, and so on and so forth. Uh, and therefore, there will be need for close-out. Now, as far as close-out is concerned, concerned is about documenting the key aspects of where you are at as you finish. And the close-out, it's really about taking stock of what you have done and looking at where you are at and certain requirements on the donor perspective must be observed. And some of these are certain documentations which must be submitted to the donor. And this includes the final progress report, the final federal financial report, and then final interventions statement and the certifications where necessary. Um, and those are required to be submitted within 90 days of completing the, the, the project implementation or the grant implementation, and those are very important. Uh, of course, there are all the records within the institution which received the grant, and those uh, records must be kept. It's required most of the time that they should be properly kept, kept for at least six years uh, for reference in future. But sometimes, if there is some litigation, it may be necessary that they are kept for a longer period. Most of the time these days, in the, this day and era, it's about soft copies. So they won't be kept in, the, in soft copies in the computers with the proper backups, but also inevitably there will be some handy copies in files. So those must be securely stored. So part of what the institution therefore must have is an office where all the records for whatever research on grants which has been ap uh, applied for and awarded are kept securely, just in case uh, there is need for reference. And it's important that is also observed. Now, one component of the grants management cycle, which is not talked a lot about, and this is the final one, is the sustainability considerations. This aspect is forgotten quite a lot because surely when you apply for a grant, it's important to appreciate that there will be certain impacts. And in most of them, what you want to achieve, particularly the long-term impacts, will not be achieved within the project funding period. It's therefore important to factor in some activities or some strategies which you see that the grant will continue even after the funding has ended. Whatever gains you have gotten through the grant will be sustained and maintained for as long as it takes. Uh, and particularly if you are talking about good health outcomes, that becomes critical because you do not want to improve health outcomes which goes down after the end of the funding. So there has to be systems. That's why the institutional leadership should own everything and that's why it was important initially to involve them and start sharing with them how can they own some of the activities which will require funding. Can they be owned by the institution and look for funding elsewhere? Can the government, respective government, take up some of those? Or is there another donor who would be willing to continue funding? So sustainability strategies are extremely very important. Thank you very much.